here we go. We are going to go over the wages of sin. In Romans 6, it explains that the wages of sin is death. I'm just going to run through this in however much time it takes to cover it. And um, wages of sin is death. So, wages are, what are wages? Let's look it up. A fixed regular payment. So it's a fixed regular payment, okay? So the wages of sin is death. So if we sin, are we or are we not dead? The wages of sin are death. So, why did God say to be born again? Only then shall you live. Is what he basically said. And um, the Bible also explains to us that um, we are born in sin here on this earth. This earth is just a place of judgment. It is a place for the dead, the dying. What we see is vanity. Um, we covet these things. We um, covet the world. And, uh, we do all types of stuff. It's, it's, it's ultimately why we're dying. It's ultimately why we're dead and why Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Okay? Because we're already dead. God's already done everything for us. Um, we just have to, um, it's not about a test. It's not about any of that. It's about bearing what our fathers have, have done. It's, it's about um, dealing with our sin. It's about, um, we are um, born of our fathers and our mothers who are also sinners. And it is a timeline that just goes back all the way back to um, sin, sin coming into our people, and um, sin got here because of, um, I want to say, Lucifer at the time, um, and his angels, um, uh, wickedness was found in them because they thought that they could be better than what they were created to be, and um, basically that's how we operate out here, when we don't know the truth. And the truth is that God has everything taken care of. And that is, that is the faith that a Christian walks in. It's not about the ambitious person or the American dream. It's about submission and taking your cross and carrying it all the way to Golgotha, which is the place of the skull, and, cruci and being crucified there. And, and knowing that God has done everything. That's salvation, man. That's that's the only way out of death ever. There's no other there's no other way. Okay, so we're gonna jump into this real quick. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not? That so many of us were baptized unto Jesus Christ, were baptized unto his death. Therefore we are buried with him by the by baptism unto death. So we we died, people. We died. Christ, Christianity is about the death of our will. And the super seedification of God's will over ours and everything that is ever going to be done that we will perceive in everything everything that we're going to see everything that we have seen it's all his work for us by his love so that we can continue to be be like Christ be become more like Christ Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death. 
that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, taking up your cross, which we are going to jump into in Matthew. <clears throat> our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, which it is. It already is. Because we don't serve sin anymore. We serve the Lord because we know he reigns. And if you want to take this into the seriousness of it all, our will only comes from a cause and, cause and effect, law of cause and effect. That is the supersedification of, 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 air quotes, free will. Free will is just cause and effect because of sin and the division of lie and truth. And... Um, people basically just walking in darkness <clears throat> for he that is dead is freed from sin okay so if the wages of sin are death right and we sin then we're dead Right? And it is now no longer us, but Christ. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For he, in he that died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. <clears throat> Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Okay, this, 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 this is serious right here. This right here is completely serious. Reckon yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin. Wages of sin is death, but alive unto God. By faith, his, his will above our will. What do we want? Did you ever read Daniel about how, um, what was it, Tekel? Tekel was written on the walls, and um, the king had Daniel interpret it, and it said, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Wanting, if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, is um, it's defined as lack or lacking or deficient um god's neither of those sin is death and that's definitely a lack okay let not sin therefore reign in your bodies that you should obey the lust thereof it's telling you that it's not it's also telling you not to fight your so-called sin because it's already you've already died to it let it not reign therefore in your mortal bodies but let your god in heaven reign over your mortal bodies don't worry about how you're gonna get through the day god's already taken care of it jesus christ was prophesied before he even came and his son died on a cross. Do you not think he's going to take care of you? I mean, that's just shameful to think that he wouldn't. If, if he had his son come here to explain to so many te teachers to teach you that grace is sufficient for you. Jesus Christ is the way to heaven. It is the only way to heaven. There is no other teaching on earth. 
that that that'll lead you to heaven, because he he was, um, he was God, come in the flesh. Jesus Christ was God come in the flesh, and he didn't sin once, but he became sin, and died. Because in this world, man has to die. If you are born into this world, a man has to die. But he was God and man. So he rose from the dead. And he was our sacrifice for sin. Forever. And it is no, no longer us who try to live our lives for the best of our family. We have a loving, almighty, powerful God who does all of that. Okay? Nobody's going to be able to love you more than an omnipotent God. The omnipotent God. But alive unto God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, let not sin reign in your mortal bodies, that you should uh, that you should obey the lusts thereof. Okay, so we're gonna jump down here. What fruit ye have in the things in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. See, you don't like doing certain things because it's life telling you. That I already have everything under control anyway. Okay? Because the end of those things is death. Life will open up can of all over your face, all over your body, until you realize that it's the one in control, not you. I say it over and over and over and over again. And that is the truth. It is the only way to make it out of the dead state that sin is in. Um, wages of sin is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, okay? Become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and everlasting life. It's pretty simple stuff. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So what do you do? If the wages of sin is death, then you are supposed to carry carry your um your cross. Just a second here. See, Jesus even explains it to to uh, to Peter when uh, Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, saying. Who do men say that I, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And Simon Peter answered, said, thou art the king, that's what that means, or the anointed one. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father who is in heaven. The only, pre only, only people that are um, have a connection with the Father who is in heaven are people that can identify that Christ and honestly believe that Jesus Christ did die and rose again and that he came in the flesh as a man. Those are the people of God. No matter how many fingers are pointed at them, no matter how many... If, if somebody can say that with their mouth and believe that and they live their life knowing that, 
then then they're safe. It's just that simple, dude. You can't you can't because they have the connection, and that means um, God has revealed it to them. I mean, it's not it's not difficult. Those who are saved know they're saved. It's just that simple. It's not it's not an if or and question. There's no buts about it. Okay. Because Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. You know? Just like um, Johnny Depp is Johnny Depp. You know? You can't read any book on earth and say that it hasn't taken place because you've already perceived it in your mind and projected it out just the way that you need to. Leaving a ripple effect to everything that you are ever going to pass through. It's, it's just that simple. It's called cause and effect, guys. It's the real will. It's the will of God that 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 triumphs over any ambitious thoughts, any any wantonness, any anything. The only reason you're like that is because you think that you can surmount to something and become something, and you seek glory, which is all explained in our the uh, attributes of Lucifer and Satan themselves. And that's why we are dead until we are saved, and then we live. Because the wages of sin is death. Alright. And he says, I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whoever and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now he said this to him. Because his father revealed it to him. Who he who he was. Okay, he didn't just say that to some random dude. Because he knows who he is. Jesus Christ knows this man is already linked in with his father in heaven. And he just told it in front of all of his disciples. Explained it. Uh, told him who he was in front of all his disciples. <coughs> because he... Because when you, when you are linked in with the father... You do have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It's just that simple, guys. Why? Because of faith. You're dead and he lives. It's his will. Not ambition. Not, not an American dream. Not, not um, spending a thousand dollars on a beautiful ring to please your wife because you want you to have a good uh, good marriage that's nothing like that it, it, it it's it's submission to the Lord and becoming his servant and knowing that you must die and what does sin do sin does reign sin does reign in the body it's what it does it has to die okay it dies therefore you are dead. And you are living in Christ. Christ has already everything taken care of. Um, um, the land flowing of milk and honey. You can get there right now. It says, um, where does it say this at? Uh, let's look it up real quick. Uh, all these things will be added. Matthew, King James says, um, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, copy, go here, paste. Um, also, that was a really good one. Do not do your elms before men to be seen by them, otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Eh, common sense. All right, where are we at here? Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. He says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you're going to wear, what you put on. Is life not more than meat and body than clothing? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. Uh, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? 
Which of you, by thinking about how you're going to approach the day, can make yourself any stronger than what you are already? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how, uh, how you came to be where you're at right now. Because of everything. Because of everything that is. Everything that you've seen has influenced you. Everything that you've smelt has influenced you. It's not you, buddy. It's not you who do who does anything. Okay? You are influenced, bud. You are programmed into doing your stuff. If you wanna if you wanna debunk that, if you wanna try and demug that. If you want to spend days and days and days trying to, um, what do you, what do you say? Um, um, focus your mind on a non-existent objective point. You're not going to be able to do it. Then. You, you, you can't do it. That's why Jesus came here in the first place. So people could identify with who God is. But anyway, it says, um, "By you take thought for him and consider the wisdom of the field. They grow, they toil, uh, they they toil not, uh, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And Solomon had the ultimate wisdom, okay? And he's and Jesus Christ is saying that he wasn't arrayed like one of these because because he he had sin in." That flower's just there to express God's love, man. You know? Because that's what a lily is. A lily's a beautiful thing. <clears throat> anyway. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not he much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now, what is faith? We're going to get into that in Hebrews 11. Wherefore, take no thought, saying, What we shall eat, what we shall drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Righteousness. Do we need to go over what righteousness is? Righteousness. It's right. Are you always right? No, you're not. Therefore, what does it say? Oh, ye of little faith, okay? Have faith that God's work is done and you've already completed your journey. It's just that simple. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take no, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Okay, so we've gone over all of that. And I'm um, trying to figure out where inspect. Um, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, uh, what was it? It was over here. Take up your cross and oh, it should be right here actually. Right. Then Jesus told his disciples, Take up your cross. If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, just take up his cross and follow me. Okay, so what did Jesus Christ do? He took his cross from the gates of Jerusalem and he carried it all the way up to a hill on Golgotha. There it was placed. <clears throat> With him on it and set upright by everybody else. Okay? So basically, everybody's gonna know you're a Christian. This is, man, see, this is how deep this is. Okay, if you guys, people don't understand. They're not gonna know what you are, but they're gonna know. Okay, because people are how I've explained them to be. Okay, they, they are ambitious. They want the American dream. They want to become something. They want to 
you know, fit in with their clique. They want to be with the emos. They want to, you know, be loved. And all these things are just an example of everything that's already given to you in Christ. You know, they, 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 they're missing out on the whole picture. You know, they're, they're inside the macro mind or the, 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 um, the micro mindset inside in the macro. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't have it all, man. They lack. They're deficient. They want. You know, they want to be more than what they are. And Jesus told the disciples, if anyone would come after me, take your cross at Jerusalem, carry it, and let yourself die for the Lord. Because we need to be born again. Okay, with the will of God. Okay, let's, let's look this up real quick here. Um, Here it is, John 6, 6.38. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of my father, will of him that sent me. Okay? That's what he came to do. That's what he came to do. Okay? This is what it is to be born again. This is what it is to become, to be a Christian. To be born again. For I came down from heaven to be born again. Not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. That's what it is to be born again. And then you get to paradise. Once, once you're cast off this cloak, this, this clothing. Which is explained in Corinthians. Um, um, take off the corruptible and put on in corruption. There it is, right here. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Um, basically what it's saying is that we have to die so that we can become immortal. Which, um, indeed we are dead unto sin, so we have already put on immortality. And it is the Father's will that we do forever. And then we will be in paradise, because we won't have all this... This, this world, you know, uh, the flesh warring with the spirit, okay, it's what's going on here. That's why Christians are persecuted and all this, but you're supposed to be, uh, what do you say? You know that you are blessed when you're persecuted. What is it? Uh, the flesh wars against the spirit, okay? For the flesh wars against the spirit... And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. Okay. So you're not going to be able to do anything that you want to do anyway. So you might as well just give up and take up your cross. But I mean you're going to be able to do some things that you want to do. Because um, you wouldn't be able to um, identify um, with what you want. Because you wouldn't get that reward, and then life wouldn't be able to teach you your lesson. So it, it's it's pretty simple stuff, man. It is. It's all there for you anyway. So you might as well just you know, it's the truth, man. It's cause and effect, but that's what happens when um, depression stemmed from sin. It's deathly um, sickness. Uh, cancer, everything, man. And 
<clears throat> when we die, when a person who has the mindset as I have, um, man, dude, I can't even fathom. Like, I just know, I know, know that it's going to be, it's going to be everything that I've ever waited for in my entire life. When I, when I pass through that door and I get to put on, you know, incorruption, incorruptibility, you know, like I will no longer be able to do, um, dumb things. I won't be able to have corruption. You know, I won't have it anymore because our bodies are decaying. That's what they're doing. They're going through a process of decomposing already. They're dead. Okay? That's what aging is. People don't, people don't know these things because our world is just, it, it's, it's filled up exactly the right way as if it was a place of judgment. <laughs> it's pretty cool, man. Like, you wanted, you wanted to be here and die, so that's what you're gonna do. That's basically how that ended up. Because we, we came from sin, okay? Let, let me, let me, let me let you understand that. Like, we came from sin. We are our fathers and our mothers, and they are their fathers and their mothers, and it all goes back to um, a wicked entity who thought that he could be better than his creator. And he spoke, and when he spoke, the ripple effect happened. And it's now cause and effect. And we now have a divide. Okay. But eventually, one day, all that's going to be wiped clean. And we're not going to have to deal with that anymore. Alright, so we'll go back here. So anyway, the wages of sin is death. If anyone would come after me. So do you want to go after Jesus? Let you. Let him deny himself. Okay, that's a strong. That's a strong word coming from Jesus. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. There's no joke. Coming from God. <clears throat> okay, now. Now, now faith. Now living by faith. Because we as Christians. We do not walk by sight. We walk by faith. We literally walk by faith. We don't know how to work outside of it. When your faith is that strong, when you are an adult Christian, because Christians grow in maturity, okay? Um, when you are an adult Christian, uh, because like some, some, some people just, you know, they believe that God is God. We already went over that. They believe that um, God has already said that he is who he is and that he um, uh, died and rose again and that he came in the flesh. A believer knows that. But like a strong Christian, an adult, mature Christian knows that it's God's will over ours every single time. So we're supposed to enjoy what we have, be thankful for what we have, and continue to let his glory be present in our lives so that we can receive from him his glory and continue to shine so that we know that we live. Because when you when you consciously know that the law of cause and effect is supremacy, and it is, because there's no other way around it. It's been proven. And that he is. And that the law of cause and effect came. So it came. Okay. So it came from. It came from. So what is from? From is the point of origin. Is it not? It's the point of origin. So therefore... It is the creator, okay? 
you know? See, we mature Christians don't need to, we don't need to do really anything that we don't want to do. Because everything that we do is already done anyway. Like, <laughs> you know, like, we can't do anything that we can't do anyway. We already know. That's how we're at peace. He's the Prince of Peace. Jesus Christ is called the Prince of Peace. Okay? See, now, now, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, the evidence of things not seen. So, how can you see something that's not seen? How is there evidence of things not seen? Through, um, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Okay, so when we say word, let's think in terms of a frequency. Anything that's solid, it's technically still moving. It vibrates at a frequency, emitting a sound and a light wave. Okay. Anyways, the worlds were framed by God, the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay. <clears throat> by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying to his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. And let's go down here. It was a really good one. Um... By faith, Abraham, when he was um, tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, counting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him a figure. And also, when you when you read the Word of God, um, to understand that God was in control, like basically playing puppetry and explaining that the whole world's just under judgment because sin is death, um, it makes a whole lot more sense. Um, when Moses um, went to Pharaoh and with the staff, people like to think of that as, uh, man, Moses was really cool, man. No, dude, that was God. Okay, that was God. That was all God. Everything was God. Everything is God. Jesus Christ even became sin. Okay, did you read that in the Bible yet? Jesus, Jesus Christ became our sin, and then died. See, he he took on mankind's sin, and then he rose from the dead by the Spirit of God. Uh, it's in there. We'll, we'll, we'll just not go into that right now. Uh, we're moving pretty fast here. Though. See, see, God does all these things. Thus saith the Lord to his, to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have hold to subdue nations before him. And I will loosen the loins of kings to open up before him. The two leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. See, that's, that's some serious stuff. I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the brass gates and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Just think, you know, you can just replace your name right here. Okay? Just throw in Alex or, you know, Genevieve or whatever. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. He's not playing around when he's telling you that either. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call, by thee, call thee by thy name and the God of Israel. For Jacob, my, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. That's uh, 
as the elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. See, see, I have called thee by name. Okay? The mouths that these mothers and fathers are using, they're not even their own mouths. God has everything written down, dude. It's like a book that he's just reading and things are playing out in his head. It's basically what it is. <clears throat> That's like a book he writ he wrote and he just read. He's just reading. That's why they call it the book of life. <laughs> okay? Like names being blotted out, etc., etc. I am the Lord. There is none else. There is no God beside me. I gird thee, though, that, though thou hast not known me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. All right, we're going to stop here for a second. Now, when we read Genesis 3, Okay, this is when um, Adam and Eve were deceived by the serpent. The serpent said... Oh, we're going to have to go to it. We're going to have to do this. Um, three. NIV King James Version. The serpent said, And the woodman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. For God doth know. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, that in the day ye eat thereof. See, this dude already knows that in the day ye eat thereof. Do you know what that means? That means the serpent knows that they're already going to eat it. I mean, do you understand that sentence? People be like, man, if they just didn't even do that, it doesn't work like that, okay? It doesn't work like that. This was supposed to happen. This is all right here. It's because of the serpent's judgment upon himself. This is the serpent's judgment. All this right here, everything that Adam and Eve are doing right now, is the serpent's judgment. Adam and Eve were created because um, he gave his angel... His 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 um anoint his um his covering cherub, which was Lucifer, the will, to be, he his his own will. He was like him. He he wasn't God, but he was created to love him completely, not like a complete, you know, moron robot. And Lucifer decided that he found in himself this. And to said, and he and he wanted to be better than uh, his creator, and that's not possible because of the law of cause and effect. So there's that. <clears throat> it was pretty stupid. I would agree with you. Um, but yeah, this was this this, this is why God made Adam and Eve in the first place. It's it, it's because um, the serpent, um, which is the devil, which is the dragon, which is Satan. And that is explained in Revelations. The serpent, the dragon, the devil, they're all the same thing. Okay. Adam and Eve were just made because of these fallen angels, which came down later in Genesis 6 to mate with the woman of Earth um, and have babies with them and stuff. It was all for their judgment so they can get trapped here. All we are is um, basically their damnation.
but we have um, mingled with them, and we've become them. Therefore, as soon as the serpent opened his mouth to um, to Eve, um, it was assimilation. It was a, it was a mindful assimilation. She became pregnant with his words and his deceiving words which thought that he could be better than God, okay? And that's how our sin came into us, okay? And this is their judgment. They now have to uh, die, and we get to live, you know? Basically, there were some bad angels, and they thought that they could come here to... Um, boss up and have a playground, but in reality, that, that's not possible because of the law of cause and effect. Again, God is going to remain God. The beginning is always going to remain the beginning. There's no changing that. You know, like, you can flip a book over and t say that's the beginning, but you're going to be reading it upside down and backwards, and it's not going to make any sense. You know, it's, it, the beginning is always going to be the beginning, and that's just how it's going to be. And the ending is always going to be the ending, because the beginning. You know? It's just that simple. It's all done, dude. This world is over, but, like, I don't know how else to put it. We've already died to sin, we're just waiting to take off these, uh, these dirty robes and live in, uh, the righteousness of God. And, um, yeah, this was a, this is what it means to walk by faith. Um, just, um, you know, being, um, aware that God's will is done. And, um, We live, we live by the work of the Lord, not not by our works of our own hands. Because there's some serious judgments and uh, revelations about uh, not repenting from the works of your own hands. If you ever want to go and read that, <clears throat> this is really good. The words of Jeremiah, the son of uh, Hilkiah, of the priests, to whom the Lord came in the days of. Uh, Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It also, uh, in the days of Joachim, the son of Joseph Judah, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Okay, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So, 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 before he was even formed, before he was even the egg and the sperm he knew who this guy was okay so we come from the lord okay but we get put into these bodies okay that's why it's why isaiah called the whole book of isaiah calls him the lord of hosts And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. <clears throat> before I formed thee in the, in the belly, I knew thee. You know, that, that, that's some interesting stuff. That, 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 that implies that before the sperm had even entered the egg, that this man... Was already known. So that implies that. According to the law of cause and effect. That implies that he has known. How they were going to get together. How his family was going to get together. Do you get the picture? Like. It's all written guys. This is the word of the Lord. This is the will of God. Done. 
and can't fight it. There's no way to fight it. And if you think that you're accomplishing things for your family or for your dog or your cat, God's going to give you a little reminder. And you're there for that reason. Okay? Like, that's just something you're going to have to deal with, man. Because there's no fighting it. I just wanted to read that spot right there. Before I formed thee in thy belly, before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I redeemed thee a prophet unto the nations. <coughs> okay, so what is a prophet? <coughs> I am thy fellow servant, and a brethren, and of thy brethren, and of thy brethren, that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, did I not just explain to you, going over how uh, Jeremiah's parents, before he was formed in the belly, and his parents were all set up? Guys, this is the spirit of prophecy, okay? It's not us. It's not us. We're not a special people. It's God. Okay? Like, step out of the cereal box and be the factory, man. It's pretty simple stuff. God bless. The wages of sin is death. Testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Simple stuff. It's life, man. It's life in a nutshell.